Welcome to our Flex Deploy with Oracle eBusiness Suite video. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch our Flex Deploy overview video, which can be found on the videos page of our website. In this video, we will explore Flex Deploy's comprehensive support for managing the lifecycle for Oracle EBS customizations. The first question we're often asked is, what customizations does Flex Deploy support? Flex Deploy has very broad and deep support for most object types, including OAF, forms, reports, AOL objects, SQL, and many more. The knowledge of how to build and deploy each of these object types is embedded within what is called a plugin in Flex Deploy. The Oracle EBS plugin provides operations for build and deploy, start and stop for the various server components, online patching for EBS 12.2, that is ADAP, and other operations, such as applying Oracle patches for 12.1.3, compiling invalid SQL, and generating and signing jar files. Plugin operations are used within Flex Deploy workflows to design the build and deploy processes that meet your needs. Due to the robustness of the out-of-the-box EBS plugin, these workflows tend to be very simple, but can be designed to meet even the most unique requirements. Let's look at a build workflow for EBS. Here you can see the Oracle EBS plugin and its many operations. The build workflow is responsible for collecting the EBS customizations and producing an artifact, which will later be deployed using a deploy workflow. The build operation collects these files from the source control management system configured on our project, or optionally extracts the object from the development EBS instance for select object types. For example, some customers use source control for objects such as SQL, OAF, forms, and reports, but then prefer that the build operation extract the source directly from the EBS development environment for AOLs. The Oracle EBS plugin's build operation manages both use cases for you out of the box. Now let's look at the corresponding EBS deploy workflow. This workflow takes the artifact produced from a build and deploys its objects into a target EBS instance. Once again, the deployment is managed through a single operation, which handles all object types we talked about earlier. I've also added a condition to restart the OA core tier of EBS if any of the deployed files are Java. You can see that the stop and start OA core steps are provided as out-of-the-box EBS plugin operations. We could have easily added an invoke test step to execute test cases associated with the project being deployed. The EBS build and deploy workflows are using out-of-the-box plugins and workflow operations, and no custom scripting was required. Now let's go look at a project for building and deploying customizations. A project is a definition of a set of customization files, which is typically mapped to your custom top. You can add customization files to the project as needed, but it's static in the sense that you use the same project to manage many releases. If you have a single custom top, you'll typically need only one Flex Deploy project. On the Configuration tab, I first selected the Source Control Management System type, which for this example is Git. The Source Configuration identifies the SCM instance, which contains connection information for my Git repository, and the location of the source code within that repository. Notice this project has both master and fixpack1 streams. Next, I associated the build and deploy workflows we reviewed earlier, and the logical EBS instance to which we will build and deploy on. Next, we will review the project files for this project. By clicking on the Populate from Git button, Flex Deploy will interrogate the source files for this project, automatically detect their type, and gather some additional metadata. The metadata varies from type to type, so let's investigate for a couple of the types. For SQL and PLSQL, we see a few attributes, such as the target location of where the file will be copied to on the server, and the command that will be used to deploy the file. Here we can see that the deploy command copies the file to its destination directory, and uses SQL Plus to execute the SQL in the EBS database. For AOL objects, we see a few different attributes, such as the object type, which again was automatically identified when Flex Deploy interrogated the files. Here we notice the source column supports EBS in addition to the default value of SCM. If the source type is EBS, the generated build command will be used to extract the object from the EBS instance mapped to our build. The deploy command is used to load the AOL into the target EBS instance, for AOLs, you can see the FND load download is used for build, and FND load upload is used for deployment. We won't review all EBS object types supported by Flex Deploy, but it's important to understand that Flex Deploy automatically generates the commands to build and deploy each of the object types, and utilizes user configured properties from the project and topology to accomplish its build and deploy implementation. Attributes can be modified from their defaults, and the commands can be regenerated as necessary to meet your requirements. There are several options for building EBS customizations, including building all the files for the project or selecting the individual files within a build request. To build by selecting individual files, we start on the Project Files tab. I'll select three AOLs, two Java objects, and a report. 
Now I click the Build with Selected button, which launches the build request form with the six objects we selected. We can also search for files and add them to the request form. We can now click Submit Request to submit our build request. On the Execution tab, we can see our build workflow execution has started, and we can monitor its execution and results by drilling into the workflow details. Here we see the workflow is implicitly checking out our selected files from the Git repository and using the EBS plugin's build operation to create the artifact. After the execution completes, we can see the artifact which was produced on the Artifacts tab, or see file-level details of the artifact on the Files tab. This artifact is now versioned in the FlexDeploy Artifact repository and is locked from any further changes and can be deployed to one or more target environments. Other options for building customizations include augmenting a previous build with new files or new revisions of existing files, consolidating files across one or more build packages, or building only files which have changed from the last build. To deploy the build to an environment, we click the Deploy button to launch the deploy request form. We select the target environment and review the files that were captured as part of the build. Note that by default the latest build package was selected for deployment, but we can remove and add one or more packages if required. We will now click the Submit Request button, and we can see that the deployment request is executing. The deploy operation from the EBS plugin is executing the deployment command of files in the build. Now let's take a look at how to build all of the files for the project without having to pick and choose individual files and why that's important. To build all the files, simply click on All Files from within the Build button. Notice the request form does not prompt for the list of files. You may be thinking, why would I want to build and deploy all files every time? One important feature of FlexDeploy is that while it may build all the files, it will only deploy the files which have changed since that last deployment. So if you deploy all files but only one changed, it will only deploy the one file. The deployment status for each file can be viewed on the Files tab of the workflow execution. Now this is helpful for a couple of reasons. First, you don't have to identify which files were actually modified, which can be tedious when changes accumulate across a large development team. Second, building all files enables continuous integration. To configure continuous integration, let's look at the Continuous Integration tab of our project. Here we can trigger a build by adding a poll SCM trigger. This configuration will monitor the source stream of the project and trigger a build if changes are committed. We can also trigger a deployment to a target environment whenever a build is completed for a particular stream. Similarly, we can configure scheduled builds and or scheduled deployments. When a build is triggered, all files within the SCM stream for the project are included in the build. We've reviewed the foundational features related to build and deploy automation. Advanced pipeline and release automation capabilities provide additional opportunity to streamline and orchestrate your end-to-end -end software delivery processes. Pipelines define each stage in your delivery process, and in this simple pipeline, we have three stages, development, QA, and production. Each stage includes gates and steps that will enforce rigor and repeatability for managing changes as they move across the pipeline. The gates and steps can be a combination of automated and manual activities. The QA stage in this pipeline requires an automated test be completed successfully and approval from a QA manager. We could have easily added a scheduled gate to enforce changes be made at a specific time. After the QA gates are satisfied, the steps will be executed and include automated deployment of projects, automated tests, a manual test verification, and notification to the QA manager. Releases can include any number and type of FlexDeploy projects, including infrastructure, database, middleware, and applications. This weekly eBusiness Suite release includes only one project, XXHR, and uses the all files approach we discussed earlier. Release snapshots move the release content across the delivery pipeline, managing the gates and steps defined through each stage of the pipeline. The release dashboard provides visibility to the status of each snapshot and helps manage the orchestration of releases as they are executed across test environments and ultimately into production. This release snapshot is waiting for one last approval gate prior to executing the deployment to production. Now let's look at a few examples of the visibility we have in FlexDeploy. On the environment state report, we can see what files were deployed, their versions, who deployed them, and other auditing detail. On the environment history report, we can see the full history of every file deployed to every environment, providing a full audit history. Finally, the environment discrepancy report provides visibility into the differences between two or more environments. In this video, you saw how FlexDeploy's comprehensive support for Oracle eBusiness Suite makes it easy to build, deploy, and manage customizations across your environments. The out-of-the-box plugin eliminates manual activities and scripting, and pipeline and release orchestrations make it easy to streamline and control your development and delivery processes. 
Flexiploy provides visibility and full auditing history for all changes across the entire pipeline. For more information or to request a demo, go to flexigon.com slash flexdeploy.